I am Dustin Abbott and I'm here today to talk to you about cleaning your sensor on your camera. This is one of the questions that came up. I did a, a live stream and kind of a Q&A with a couple of camera clubs back towards the end of 2021. And one of the uh, questions that came up is in regards to cleaning your sensor. So I'm going to give you a uh, just a few tips on this this topic, which is a little bit complicated. So let's start by saying why you might need to clean your sensor. One of the most common reasons is is that sensors do get exposed to dust, um, you know, particles, little hairs or fibers in the process of changing lenses or just over you know normal use. As a byproduct of that, some of that can find its way to the sensor where it will stick there and most commonly shows up is as black spots up on your screen. And um, you know, either dust spots or sometimes you can tell it's you know more like a little fiber or something because of the shape of it. And it shows up actually more as you stop the aperture down. So if you're shooting at wide apertures, f1.4, f1.8, f2, you may not see it. If you stop down to f5.6 or even more so f8, f11, it's really going to show up because it becomes more in focus. So byproduct of that is that it can be really destructive to your photos and some cameras are worse than others. Now, fortunately, there has been a trend started by Canon and then Sony's picked it up with some of its most recent models like this to where you can elect to have a, a kind of a shutter, some kind of you know, protective screen come down over the top of the sensor when the camera is powered off. So when you're changing lenses, there's less access for dust to intrude right into this. And I will note that mirrorless cameras do tend to be a little bit worse than what DSLRs were for the simple reason that you had the first thing that dust would come in contact most likely would be the mirror. And a lot of times you'd end up with dust on your mirror, but not necessarily would it always reach to the sensor. So mirrorless cameras are a little bit more susceptible to this. So that's why I'm really glad to see that uh, that feature come into play. Most cameras uh, do have some kind of cleaning uh, process built into it, and it might be a little bit of a vibration of the sensor, um, and it gives an opportunity that under you know normal wear and tear, it might get rid of most of that. And I do find it to be most helpful if you're going to do that to when you run it, uh, face the uh, camera down and so gravity can help and so if dust particles vibrate free they're more, more likely to fall away rather than just to you know in this position you know fall down into the base where it's most likely going to get back onto your your actual uh, sensor uh, as well and so anyway just and if you're not even familiar with what a sensor is it typically it has this green kind of finish to it and you can see it back behind that as I have lifted that up so if you're not comfortable cleaning your own sensor, I'm going to give you kind of a couple of tiers of, of cleaning here. And one of them I think is acceptable to do. The other I don't necessarily recommend unless you're a really, really confident um, and experienced user. So the first cleaning, which I think is acceptable, is a more basic cleaning that if you've got, you know, a couple of particles of dust on there, you run that cleaning cycle and with the sensor exposed, you use something like a blower, which you can get very inexpensively. And again, I recommend doing it with the you know, the sensor tilted down, but you're just going to puff some air, uh, and particularly if you know where to target that particular area to blow that dust particle off. And so it's recommended to use a blower, something like this, um, rather than a can of compressed air, because a can of compressed air like this does use a gas to, um, to propel, it's, that's the propellant in there, and so that you can end up with, you know, just causing, you know, maybe more damage to the sensor in the process by getting those oils um, on the sensor itself, which makes it more difficult to clean. Cleaning off dust, relatively simple. Cleaning off, you know, other things, more complicated. You don't want to get to the more complicated stage. Now, um, I have, you know, over the years, I've got this little kit, you know, where I've got different tools in there to where if I have like a really persistent particle, you know, I might use, and I keep it in a Ziploc bag, by the way, to keep dust from getting on any of these things. So I want to keep them as, you know, sterile as possible. But, you know, something like this where I could dab something away, you know, if it's a kind of a, a tough particle to dislodge. But also helpful is if you can get a little more of the velocity uh, than what you can get. So, I mean, the reason why people will go for, you know, the compressed air is that it has a good amount of velocity. I recently um, picked up this. This is from Nightcore. It's called the Blower Baby. It's actually a rechargeable a blower that has you know a couple of important designs it's designed for cleaning off it's an uh, electronic photography blower and so it does have a motor inside you charge it via us usb-c and you might be able to hear 
it uh, has a lot higher volume of airflow than what a simple blower does. And, you know, I tested just kind of getting close to my face where I'm sensitive and between the two things. And I would estimate that the blower baby is probably two or three times higher velocity than what, you know, the simple blower is. It's designed with this in mind. And so it has only one place where air enters in, it goes through a filter, it comes out, it's got kind of a silicone tip here to make sure that if you, you know, inadvertently bump it against something delicate, you're not causing any kind of scratching or damage. But it's designed to where it takes air in, it directs it through without picking up any kind of additional particles. In that sense, it's actually a cleaner process than a simple blower because there is no filter, there's just a hole where it's sucking air through. And, you know, kind of relying on a, a small tip that, you know, both directs that airflow and concentrates it, but, you know, also in theory hopes to hopefully keeps less particles from coming out. This actually, you can actually replace the filters that are uh, in here and it does, you know, depending on what kit you get, it can come with additional filters for that purpose. And you can, this basic thing runs around between $75 and $80. And then you can, you know, add some other pieces to it that will give you, you know, uh, some, some of these other tools like what I've got here that will help, you know, to either brush or to, you know, pick up some stubborn particles. Things you can mount on there that may help you in the process itself. So far, I've been really happy with this. I will just, before I move on, say I've also been using this just when I take off lenses, you know, blowing off the front or the rear of the lens just to get particles off there so they don't end up, you know, eventually lodged on my sensor. And for the basic cleaning, it seems to do the job fairly well because you're getting a higher degree of airflow and typically it will dislodge any of those particles. Now things get a little bit more serious. Maybe you, you try to clean and you've caused more of a mess. For most people in most situations, I would recommend sending your camera in, and I know it's inconvenient and it costs you some money, but I would recommend having it cleaned by a professional. You know, if it's a Sony, send it to Sony, a Canon to Canon, et cetera. Uh, because, you know, number one, they're assuming liability for it, and also they're experienced in doing it, very likely you're not. And so if you, you know, persist beyond that, very often it's, you know, it's the equivalent of introducing some, uh, some fluids into the process for a more thorough cleaning. And for most people, I just don't recommend that you go there. And if you want, um, you know, instruction on how to do that, there are YouTube videos that will tell you how to do it. But my best recommendation is that if you're to the place where you can't clean it with a simple blower, you know, or something like this, then I would recommend that you send it in. One of the things I will note, and it could be worthwhile even if you just do it for a year, if you've got a major problem, in many cases, the kind of professional services of, uh, you know, these major brands, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they will actually, you know, it's typically somewhere around $100 a year for subscription to that membership, but they almost always include one or even multiple cleanings as a part of that. And I have utilized that on a number of occasions. I just send my gear in. You know, even if I don't have a serious problem, I send it in once a year, my cameras, maybe twice a year, and just have them professionally cleaned. And so I, I get back, you know, something that's closer to new, and I'm not running a risk. I have done it before. I have managed to do it successfully. I've also got very nervous along the way to where I was causing some streaks on the sensor and just in a little bit of a panic trying to make sure I got everything cleaner. And you just, in most cases, just don't do it. Don't do it. Um, if it's simple dust, use a blower, clean it off that way, utilize the uh, built-in cleaning mechanisms on your actual camera. And if it's more serious than that, send it in and have it professionally cleaned. My best advice to you. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you do want more information on the uh, Nightcore Blower Baby, I will throw linkage to that in the description down below. This is a new thing for me, two or three months I've been using it, but I really like it thus far. And of course, the fact that it's easily rechargeable makes it just, you know, long-term useful. And, and so I'm looking forward to continuing to use that in the future. It makes me far less tempted to reach for something like this. Also in the description, you will find linkage there to follow myself or Craig on social media, to become a patron, purchase merchandise. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Be sure to ring that bell so you get notification when new content drops. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.